Today I want to share with you one of my childhood Christmas memories. And this was when I was about seven or eight years old at my great grandmother's house, which is like the central hub of all Christmas Eve in our family. And the entire family, basically 50, 60 people, a lot of aunts, cousins, relatives, we'd all gather at my great grandmother's home. And it was a lot of food, a lot of festivities, probably a lot of alcohol, a lot of laughter, uh, definitely a drunk uncle, uh, and uh, several other small little incidents that go on. But overall, it was always a great um, celebration in my family. And it, it was just a lot of fun. I remember that very, very distinctly. And uh, basically, being an introverted child that I was, I'd often go off to some of the back bedrooms and play with one or two of my cousins just to get out of the commotion. I didn't like the big crowds all around me. And I'd, I'd, I'd do this quite frequently for you know, periods about 30 minutes at a time just to kind of get out of the, I don't know, just everyone cracking up all, all over the place. It was, it was a blast, though. And this one in particular time, I went into, through the kitchen into this back parlor area of my great-grandmother's home. And I thought it was kind of strange because all the lights were off, and I got looking in there, and there, amongst all these people, my, my great grandma was sitting there in the dark. And I walked a little closer, and I saw that she was actually crying right back there in the back parlor area. And I was like, Grandma, what's wrong? Why, why, why are you crying? And then she really didn't answer me. She just kind of patted me on the head, and, and I looked down, and, and she had this cup. And it, I couldn't really tell what it was, but it just looked like some kind of mush in that cup. And she's taking spoonfuls of it. And I said, well, what are you eating? And my great grandmother said, this is bread and milk. And I said, well, why are you eating that? And she said, because I never want to forget the depression. And that hit me really, really hard when I was a kid. Why would you want to never forget the depression? And... Later on, I come to find out that this was a weekly routine that she had. She, she carried all the way from when she was a child uh, through her entire life. Every week, she'd eat bread crumbled up in milk because that's all they had during the Depression. And uh, to continue that conversation I was having with her, uh, she basically never wanted to forget the Depression. We talked a little bit about the hard times in the Depression, how some of her cousins would have to sneak into restaurants and squirt the Heinz ketchup into a cup of water and mix it around so they'd have something to drink, uh, tomato juice of some type. And it, it, was, it was a very tough time on all these people, but she never wanted to forget that. And I thought that that was really peculiar, especially at my young age, but now I understand completely why she did that. And of Christmas Eve of all times, she just didn't want to forget that. And for so many years, I figured it was some kind of post-traumatic stress disorder or, you know, she was just wanting to live in the past. But I realize these days that that's not why she did that. It's because it was probably insanely traumatic for her to have to go from normal meals, steak dinners, um, lot like what we would have, steak dinners, potatoes, pizza, and or whatever. And she had to go to these little minger picking type meals, these little... Uh, I guess you could call them like scavengery type meals, uh, rice and beans and, and just real basic kind of things. She had, she had a milk cow and they could bake bread every now and then and that's what they ate a lot of the times. And she just said she never wanted to forget that. It just it really um, strikes a nerve of how traumatic that must have been for people in a depression. And it also makes me think how naked we're going to feel when we enter our depression, when we enter our economic collapse. And we're so used to having so much. How, how will we react when the economic collapse happens? How will re we react whenever the uh, vipers bankers devour your nest egg, devour all your wealth? How will you react when you're down to eating bags of lentils or bags of beans, bags of rice? I think it would be wise if all of us uh, tried to put into some type of practice of using our food storage, tried to... Um, implement many of the things that are in our food storage in our everyday diet. That way it won't be such a shock. It won't be a huge panic. or um, it, We'll be more familiar with what we have stored away in food storage. I also thought it was interesting at the end of that conversation. I don't remember all the details that she told me. Um, but in the end of that conversation, she said, they can take everything away from you except for what you have right here. And I'm never going to forget those words uh, because she's right. She knew many people in the Czech Republic who were taken out of their homes 
and um, lost everything by the SS. And I, I just, she's a very wise woman. I'm really um, thinking about her a lot lately and trying to somehow um, relive her memories through her stories and implement them into my life. Uh, because I realize maybe it was something in her past that, that happened to her that was very difficult, but I have to know that this is coming to us in our future. And I think that this could help many of you out there um, by, by not having such a shock when the economic collapse happens. We, if we already are used to eating our lentils, it's not going to be so surprising when we actually have to survive on our lentils or rice or beans or whatever we have stored away. Um, so, anyhow, she's just a very, um, I, I take that lesson as complete wisdom, and I hope that some of you can benefit from that. So, anyhow, I wanted to get on to a, a small little update on myself. Um, I bought myself a Christmas present, and with your help, you also helped me buy it, um, about halfway helped me buy it. And what, what I'd had in the past are some guns, and you've seen them in some of my other videos, and this is a little thirty two pistol. And this thing is more, uh, more or less would fit my wife's hand a lot better than mine. It's a smaller caliber gun. Uh, I, it's a little bit small for my hands. It, it's a good gun, don't get me wrong, but it, it just it never really fit me very well. Uh, this other pistol I bought on a whim because it used the same caliber ammunition as my other pistol, uh, but it was also compatible with the S and W long uh, ammunition, and. It uses a 32 long and a 32, uh, just like the other pistol. And it was also a revolver. I thought I'd leave it sitting around. But if you can see that handle, that's an awfully small handle. I mean, I, I can't barely even hold this gun uh, very steady. Um, it, it more or less fit my 8-year-old son's hand better, um, if, if needs be. This There's no way this is going to be a practical gun for me. I'm not positive 100% why I bought this thing, but it was a very good price, and it was the same caliber as my other gun, so I was like, you know, what the heck, I, I, I'll just pick it up. Uh, so anyway, my new toy that I bought for Christmas that fits my hand absolutely perfectly is this 357 Magnum. It has a 6-inch barrel, it's the Colt MK Trooper 3, and it has plenty of mu muzzle velocity, plenty of takedown power. It fits my hand absolutely perfectly. Um, like I said, my YouTube partnership paid for half of this thing. It's uh, definitely a good thing to have in the economic collapse for myself. My pistol this can now work for my wife, daughter, sons, if, if needs be. Uh, they all know how to shoot the other pistols, and this one just fits me a lot better, I think. Uh, so anyway, thank you very much for your contribution to that. And I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Till next time.